Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. We are in Hanukkah. We are celebrating the fifth night of Hanukkah tonight. And I'm so super excited as we celebrate it. And we're using, our family is, we're using the Galatians 5, 22 and 23, Fruits of the Holy Spirit. The last couple nights we did patience and we shared where each of us need patience. And then last night we did kindness and we acknowledged areas in which we could be kinder and that Holy Spirit is working on us. And then tonight we will do goodness. So I'm going to get into that just a little bit and encourage you in the strength of the Lord and what the Holy Spirit is sharing with me. You know, I can only share, of course, what I have inside of my members and I'm able to give out, but also what I've experienced and what maybe I am going through just because if I'm going through it, I know someone else is and God wants to encourage you. Amen. And so I'm going to read Galatians 5, 22, 23. And we're going to look at the nine fruits of Holy Spirit and specifically today, goodness. And God is just going to bring such relief, shalom to your soul as the peace of God surpasses all understanding and rules your heart. Amen. And so Galatians 5, 22, gentle, uh, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So last night, my family, as we lit the fourth night for Hanukkah, the extra candle for the fourth night of Hanukkah, we talked about kindness. And kindness is benefiting for others and looking to do things for others that is just going to bless them and prosper them. And today we're going to do goodness when we light tonight's candle. And so I'm going to get into that Greek word for goodness, but I'm also going to share something that someone here watching this broadcast needs healing and needs relief. And God is just going to bless you. And I'm going to share what Holy Spirit was doing with my heart and my spirit man this morning, unexpectedly, not even expecting it. Good morning, Kim. And it is just going to bless you. Hey, Linda. Hey, everybody. I also see Kimberly and Buffy and Tanya. God bless you all. Thank you for joining in. And so Galatians 5, we're going to look at this word for goodness. It's Strong's Concordance number 19. And that word goodness is ag athosune, ag athosune. And it means goodness. It means to benefit. And it comes from the Greek word agathos, agathos, almost like I got this, but we know that God has this agathos and it means good and it means to benefit and it means good things. Amen. And so I'm going to share what Holy Spirit put on my heart because there's someone here that needs relief and I'm going to do that word, the English word relief and the definition and just FYI, uh, Rich is on vacation today. December, he takes all the rest of his remaining vacation days, which there are, about, there are about, in a personal day, which there are about seven or eight. And so he'll be on, he's on vacation today and on vacation Friday. And so I'll be waking up later and getting on here when I have opportunity. Relief is the feeling of reassurance and relaxation following release from anxiety or distress. Is that not amazing? Because I'm going to read to you what the Holy Spirit had me post today. And I kept hearing the Holy Spirit say distress, and I'm going to share what I've been going through. And so I've had this wrestling match, and I'm just going to be real. I'm just going to be transparent. I've had this wrestling match where I had just been you know, kind of blindsided, not blindsided totally because Holy Spirit showed me things that were going on. You know, Holy Spirit shows that which is hidden and brings it to the light. And so just about how people had been talking about me and poorly and looking at me poorly and more than just talking about me poorly, just looking at me and not in a good light. And of course, being a, a law degree, a Juris Doctorate, and I think about tort law and I think about libel. 
And so with tort law, uh, let me pull this up. God wants me to pull this up. Uh, libel in relation to um, talking about others and slander and all that in relation to tort law. It is, slander is defamation. Defamation. And there are other ones. There's false light. And I'm going to get specifically to false light. To that tort law in re relation to false light. And so false light is a tort under the category of invasion of privacy where a defendant is accused of spreading falsehoods about a plaintiff that is considered objectionable by the average person. And so what does this mean? It means that the other person is saying things that are false about a particular individual. And generally, people that are public, uh, well-known people are those that can take this to court. In the old days, if you accuse somebody of sexual impropriety, if you accuse them of adultery, it was immediate um, open standard that you could take them to court and you didn't have another hurdle to jump over. And it could go directly to court if you falsely accuse somebody of adultery or of not being a virgin that it, they could be immediately taken to court for false light in portraying somebody in a false light. And I think about the light of Jesus, the light of truth that is in us, and that light is able to shine and to announce the goodness of God. And it's not about us. It is all about God. Amen. And the whole purpose of the enemy with defamation, the different things with defamation, and let me get into that particular defamation meaning and tell you what it is in relation to tort law, where you can take somebody into civil court, as well as the English definition of it. And so defamation is the action of damaging a good reputation of somebody, slander or libel, which is what I mentioned earlier. And again, there's four <clears throat> under defamation. There's defamation, there's slander, there's libel and false light. Those are the four categories that you can take someone to court for damaging your reputation. <clears throat> but I want to look at getting relief from the tongue of the enemy because what happened this morning as I woke up and I've had this wrestling match where I've forgiven, I love, and I said, Holy Spirit, what is going on? What is going on with my members? Why am I having issue in totally not wrestling with this anymore? And God said, because they're in your life, they're around you, they speak with you, but they're not repentant. And I said, okay, God, tell me more. And he said, Robin, because you have been wronged. And as in the old revivals, as in Shantung revival in China in 1930s, and as the revival in Timor in 1965, those revivals started out with repentance. That if someone, like Jesus said, if you have aught with a man <clears throat> before you bring your sacrifice, uh, if you have aught against your brother in Matthew 18, <clears throat> that you're supposed to go to your brother and you're supposed to make it right. And if he listens to you, then you've gained a brother. And so God was speaking to me and he said, Robin, you have loved, you've forgiven. Hey, Linda. He said, but the issue is, is they haven't repented and they have betrayed you and done you wrong and they have not repented to you about what they've done. And so that's what you're wrestling with. And God said, that's not an issue of forgiveness. That's an issue of trust. And so someone's listening today and you're having this wrestling match. You're wondering if you've forgiven, if you love. And God says, yes, it's just that the issue is trust and you can't trust others who have hurt you because they haven't come to you and repented. Just like years ago when I was persecuted at a church and horribly spiritually abused and mistreated, publicly humiliated constantly every single Sunday and Wednesday. And right before I ended up leaving, one of the people in the group, her heart was touched. And she came to me and she said, Robin, I just have to repent to you. And I cannot believe that you stayed here in this church with all that we've done to you, how we've treated you. And God has convicted me by the Holy Spirit and I just have to repent. And, you know, 
that's true repentance. True repentance is when you've done somebody wrong. You know, I think about if I've thought about somebody wrong, if I've spoken about somebody even, and some of y'all on here know me because I've come to you and I've repented, and I would just say, you know, listen, I thought this about you and I am so sorry. Holy Spirit has shown me my error and I shouldn't have thought that about you. And so what happens is the enemy can take what others have done to you, have said about you, betrayed you, and they're not repentant. They haven't truly come forward and repented to you one and one confess their sins and made it right, like Matthew 18, 15 through 17. And so that's an issue of trust. It's not an issue of forgiveness. And it's amazing because Holy Spirit just came on me as this spiritual grief in my spirit man. As I was grieved in my spirit man, and I thought, oh God, what is happening? And he said, Robin, you're grieved because you've been betrayed. And he said, "It's they're not repentant, but they will be in time. <laughs> they will be in time. And that you're just to love them, you're to forgive them, but you're not to trust them, okay? And that's guarding your heart in the areas of if, if you know, others have done you horribly and they're betraying you, that you just guard your heart and you shake the dust off your feet and you just hold your peace, amen? And so we're going to look at this word goodness in the fruits of Holy Spirit <clears throat> and as scripture tells us, of course, to love our enemies, Luke 6, 35, and to do good for them, to benefit them, and to not expect anything in return. And so this is what we do in the midst of this place of Holy Spirit working on their heart, good morning, Renee, and causing them to be repentant is that the reason that Jesus said that is you're, you're doing good and you're not looking for any benefit and that your good deeds will be seen to them and that the conviction of Holy Spirit will come upon them, and in time, they will repent. Amen. And only God in us, by Holy Spirit, can do this. And so, let's look at this particular word, goodness, and we're going to see uh, where it also is in Scripture in the New Testament. And so, it's only in four particular Scriptures. We see it in Romans fifteen fourteen. Galatians 5, 22, which I just did, Ephesians 5, 9, and 2 Timothy 1 and 11. And so, Scripture says in Romans 15, 14, And I myself also am persuaded of you, this is King James, brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able to admonish one another. And so, the goodness of God in you causes admonishment of the truth of scripture so that we're able to have conversations that are needed to have in order that we exalt the fruits of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our lives, so that we're walking in those fruits of Holy Spirit. And so when we look at Ephesians 5, 9, also where this Greek word is used for goodness, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. 2 Timothy 1.11, uh, or 2 Thessalonians 1.11, excuse me. 2 Thessalonians, let me make sure it's 2 Thessalonians. It should be. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 1.11, and Scripture says, Wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, when we look at this particular scripture, we're seeing the Holy Spirit show us the goodness of God in the midst of the parts where our hearts are wrestling with trusting others and in the parts where we're willing to be open again to trust and receive others fully into that fellowship of the brethren. So it's deeper where it's Psalm 133, the oil of, glad, the oil of gladness that's coming in and upon us, where there is a blessing of life forevermore. Amen. The oil of unity, the oil of unity. And where the oil of unity is, there's oil of gladness. And so what happens in relation, good morning, Marguerite, what happens in relation to this is when you're coming together in fellowship, there's not a true fellowship of the brethren. 
if there is harboring any divisiveness against another, you know, one thing the Holy Spirit showed me probably about 10 to 12 years ago, God said, Robin, you cannot have alt with people that you have true fellowship with. And I said, tell me more, God. And he said, when you come together and you break bread and you eat and you have meals, there is no way to have alt. And so what the enemy tries to do is to keep us from this space of having fellowship with one another because the enemy and pride is trying to exalt the tongue of condemnation and defamation where others are projecting something negative upon you. And that is where you have betrayal because you're not who they say you are or who they think you are. And so let's go to this word again, relief, because Holy Spirit is bringing relief against this defamation. And so defamation represents the tongue of the enemy, Isaiah 54, 17. And this is what's interesting because that was in my spirit, man. And I, as I was grieving this morning and Holy Spirit said, it's because you can't trust and you don't need to trust because of the betrayal. And then God had me pray in the morning's post about coming against the tongue of the condemner, condemning that tongue of the enemy. And this morning, my friend Catherine, who's also on my YouTube channel, uh, she said, God put it on my heart, to, and she sent Isaiah 54, 17. And I said, Catherine, you're not going to believe this. That scripture was in my heart, and that scripture was a reference into which I was posting this morning as God showed me the lying tongue of the enemy and to condemn it and that it was a betrayal of how others saw us and how they looked at us or me, I should say me, <clears throat> and that it was defamation. And so this defamation is the tongue that we're to condemn. And again, defamation means the action of damaging someone's reputation, slander or libel. And when we see this word, of course, it comes from defame, and I'm going to see where defame is broken down. So defame means to damage the reputation, slander, or libel, and it comes from uh, a Latin word, which means to spread an evil report. Is that not crazy? It comes from an old French word, defam defamer, defamer, and it comes from the Latin word defamer, which means to spread an evil report from the two words, D-I-S, expressing removal, and fama, which means report. And so the word defame means to spread an evil report. This is the tongue that's being condemned of the enemy that's come against your members, but it doesn't mean, although you love and forgive, it doesn't mean you open your heart and you trust in order to have that deeper fellowship because they need the fruits of repentance. What does that mean? They need to confess their sins. They need to weep at what they've done to you. And they need to set their hearts right because the true fruits of repentance is confession and it's sorrow in heart for having done evil. And so God is bringing relief to those that come against this. And in the midst of this, we're to do goodness. We're to do good, right? Or to have that goodness. And in fact, I'm going to go to that in Luke 6, 35. And I'm going to look at that particular word that Jesus, we're going to look at that particular word in Greek where Jesus instructed us that we're to do good for our enemy. But love your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great and you shall be children of the highest he is kind and unto the thankful and to the evil, so that we're to be kind. And so kindness was last night's Hanukkah candle that we lit of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And tonight is goodness. And so these go hand in hand. That, hey, when do you need to be kind as far as that it's beyond yourself to be kind? It's to those that have spoken evil of you, right? And defamed you. When, when, are you, when is it that only God in you can do good in these circumstances? And so this word good here in Greek is agath opoio. And I'm not going to say that again because it is so difficult. And it means to be a well-doer, to have favor uh, or a duty, 
and to do good and well. And this comes from the Greek word agath oios, which means a well-doer and virtuous and those that do well. And this comes from the Greek word that I mentioned earlier, which was the primary Greek word to goodness, agathos, which means to benefit, to do good. And so we're not expecting anything in return. Love believes the best. It doesn't matter what others think about you. Doing good is that you believe the best about others. You believe that God is going to cause them to be repentant. You love them. You do good for them. God in you is able to benefit them and not expect anything in return. And that by your good deeds, let me find this scripture. Uh, by your good deeds, um, Matthew 6, 4, 1 and 4, uh, that we're not doing our good deeds to be seen by others, but we're doing our good deeds to benefit others. And we also see this in James uh, James 2, 26, Colossians 3, 17, that whatever we do in word and in deed, that we're doing it unto Christ, that we're doing it because of Christ. We're not doing it because of ourselves. We're not doing it to look for anything in return. We're doing it because we love God. So those of y'all who are on here, let me get to the word that makes up relief, the two words, the two Latin words that make up relief. Those words are actually, it's old, yeah, Old French. I'll tell you that first, and then I'll tell you the Latin. <clears throat> old French is relever, and it means to raise up and relief, relieve. And Latin, relever, means to raise again. And it also means to alleviate. And so, what does that sound like? Oh, my goodness, that sounds like Isaiah 60, verse 1. Alleviate means to make suffering less severe. Oh my goodness. Thank you, God. And it comes from the Latin alivare, which is the two words A-D and lavare, which means to raise and influenced by light. This is Isaiah 60 verse 1. To raise and influenced by light. That we don't speak evil of others when they've betrayed us. You know, Jesus, God was telling me this the other day, last week. He said, Robin, Jesus did not open his mouth. He was a lamb led to the slaughter. And that's how Paul the Apostle says that we are every day. We're lambs led to slaughter. And God said this. He said, Robin, there's power in the words. He said, Jesus did not even speak against them. He only spoke truth, but he did not speak evil of them. He did not speak negatively of them. And I said, tell me more, God. And he said, because there's power in words. And as I've taught on the, uh, the gift of apostle in year two of God's Firewall School of the Prophets in 2013 to 2014, oh, 2012 to 2013, God showed me that the gift of apostle is the requital of sins, and I'm not going to get into all of that. And yes, that is the gift of the apostle. We that the the apostle walks in that, and we see that with Peter in Acts five, that he didn't requit, requite uh, Ananias and Sapphira of their sins. We see Jesus, the apostle, on the cross, do that as he said, "Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do." And so God said, "Robin." Never speak negative about others, even when they're doing you wrong, because there's power in words and that you are to only love and speak good. It doesn't matter what others think or say about you. What matters is what you think and say about others. Now, saints, that is God's goodness in us. And it brings relief. It alleviates our wrestling match of sorrow and sadness. And as we see this word alleviate, it comes from the Latin word alivare, which means to raise and light. And so I'm going to end right here with this is what happens when you're in God's goodness. And isn't it interesting that we're lighting candles? And so as you light the Hanukkah tonight, or let's say you're not lighting Hanukkah candles, 
just light a candle tonight and consider it a night for Hanukkah. And as my family and I have been doing is we're lighting candles every night. We're talking about the fruits of Holy Spirit. We're reading scriptures and we're talking about how we can be better in the fruits of Holy Spirit. And so tonight, light the candle. And when you talk about God's goodness and how his goodness can be seen in you, maybe read Isaiah 60 verses 1 through 2. So this is what, what the word alleviate in Latin really represents to to raise into the light oh my goodness only holy spirit could put this together amplified classic of course arise from the depression and prostration in what circumstances have kept you where you've been defamed rise to a new life shine be radiant with the glory of the lord for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all the peoples. But the Lord shall rise upon you, O Jerusalem. And his glory shall be seen on you. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day. And I'll see you early tomorrow. And you be blessed and happy Hanukkah.